I'm making this short video in the interests of Australian motoring history and its accuracy. And um, I'm just uh, questioning the accuracy of uh, how the word Monaro came about. This was, uh, this was taken from a, um, uh, a well-known Australian motoring publication uh, in September 2022. And I'd just like to show you uh, that I have in my possession a, um, another Australian motoring magazine that dates from September 1963. And uh, there's an article there in the uh, magazine that uh, I think defuncts this particular date and uh, how it all came about the word Monaro to put on the uh, one of uh, General Motors Holden's uh, sports coupes. So I'll just go to that now. Uh, it's in the Australian Auto Sportsman. September 1963, uh, the price two shillings and sixpence. Well, that was uh, 25 cents in current money. Anyway, there you go, I'll open it up and uh, show you this. Uh, oh, look at that FX album. I don't know why people call it lately, uh, oh, I think the newer generations call them 48 215s, but uh, I certainly uh, had quite a few of these as paddock bashes back in the 60s. And, uh, and uh, you know, there were a lot of hotties getting around earlier than that. And uh, no, I never called them a 48 to 15. It was just an FX. And that's exactly what it was. Okay, where are we? Another FX. Yeah. Interesting. Pretty quick standing quarter mile from the old grey motor, albeit all hotted up, obviously. You know, sick, low 16s, you know. A lot of, uh, lot of Jerdy Falcons would be struggling to do that. Standard Jerdy's, that boy, back in the day. Anyway, not bad, not bad from a three in the tree, or it's probably got a, they put Riley gearboxes in them. Sometimes Jags, if you could find one and you can afford one. Four sale. There it is, the well known Monaro GTS Dolphin. Completely factory built. So there you go, Monaro GTS. The word Monaro GTS. It's fully registered for road use. So it must have been uh, on the registration certificate, maybe, well, the Monaro GTS. And here we go, it's uh, the Australian Auto Sportsman, September 1963. Now, I've done a little bit of pretty rough and ready research on it. Uh, and um, I noticed that uh, this advertisement of, of, uh, was obviously uh, pulled for, from sale because the car didn't sell. Obviously, whether it was pulled from sale or whether um, it didn't sell, I don't know. Um, but uh, what is interesting is the fact that uh, this particular gentleman still owned the car for what? what, 50 or 60 years or something after that, because I think it was offered for sale in an, another Australian uh, uh, well-known publication uh, back in 2021, 20, I think it was. Um, uh, but there was no mention at all from for, uh, the name Monaro GDS. And uh, look, I'm just sort of surmising, I'm just sort of maybe 
you know, just putting two and two together. Um, I know that Elfin supplied bits and pieces, engines and whatever to Elfin, GMH did. Um, and uh, I'm just wondering whether maybe they bought the name and they tucked the car away, uh, you know, so they could use the name. Because it seems incredible that the car was pulled from sale and tucked away for so long. Um, did GMH pay for the name Monaro? Well, there it is in, all, in black and white, so I'll leave it up to uh, anybody else who wants to take it further. So there you go. This predates, um, I mean, the, the car was a Monaro GDS, that's what it was. And it's an Australian built coupe and it was registered for road use. So not, not what more can one say? Um, anyway, there you go. Um, so I hope that puts a cat amongst the pigeons. And, uh, you know, I think there's been a lot of uh, bullshit, so to speak, about the name Monaro uh, in the past. And I think this might put to bed a lot of it. Okay.